Right. Um, I'm Nicola McNee and I'm from Kingswood School in Bath and for the last five years I've been a school librarian. But for over 20 years before that I worked in public libraries, mostly in Northern Ireland, and I got to see loads of people of all ages learning stuff, pursuing passions, and becoming experts in the things that <coughs> interest them. And um, here's, a, here's my dad, he's the one at the end there, <laughs> and uh, he's 92 years old now, and he's still doing that. Um, his passion's art, and over the last 30 years since he retired, he's um, been educating himself in how to paint. And he's been borrowing DVDs and books from the library and learning um, with other people at uh, U3A, Education University for the, of the Third Age, where people um, who are retired help each other to learn. And uh, he's been getting immense pleasure and fulfillment from getting good at painting. And there are a couple of his pictures there. What I've tried to do here when I was thinking about why education um, was to look at my dad's learning line because he's 92 and he was born in 1918. So I've been able to look back through nearly the whole of the 20th century and see how learning and uh, what education has meant to him and what could that then mean for the future. Um, and I'm thinking of that the background I come from, libraries at their best are places of educational empowerment uh, where people of all ages go to learn and make adjustments to, the, to make their lives better. Um, so imagine my surprise when I went to work in a school library to discover how school learning seems totally divorced from what goes on in the real world. I'm sorry to be so black and white about it because you have to in three minutes really, but that's what I felt. And I can't stress enough how alien it felt to go into a school environment and still feels every day to enter this self-perpetuating parallel universe, it seems like to me, where kids learn to pass exams and teachers teach to improve their value-added scores. And each new term I go to work and I think, why? Why is it like this? And uh, is this really an education? <laughs> um, so I started at the end of my, my dad's learning uh, line and I looked at um, his life. You see, he was born in 1918, just as the First World War was ending and he's an educated man. And actually, his experience of educating, education is related to real life. He's, it was fitted in around life changes and motivated by his need to make sense of life, to improve himself, to get a job, to go places. And so I, that's what I understand the purpose of education to be, that um, public education is learning and life experience at the right time together and that equals education. So how can we do it right at the beginning of somebody's life and then send them out to the world and say that you've got your education now, get on with your life. You know, it's got to fit <laughs> with, with um, what, what people's needs are as they go through life. And um, my dad, although he's lived 92 years, he's only spent nine years of that time in full-time education in a dedicated learning institution. He spent two years at teacher training college. That's when he was 50. And they were short of primary school teachers. And uh, he did a two-year course. Um, and he made a career change to become a primary school teacher. And to get there, he went to evening classes to get five O levels so that he could go to teach training college. Um, and because he wanted, well, he, he saw his wife, actually my mother, do the same and thought, oh, I'd quite like to do that. That would be an interesting job. I'd learn quite a lot of good money doing that. So um, the education came for him, fitted in with his life and wasn't formal. A lot of it was informal. Um, so uh, my dad grew up. Um, if I go on to the third one, I'm shaking here, I didn't realise I would be. 
My, uh, my dad, born in 1918, went to school from when he was about six, left school when he was 12, and um, he had eight uh, brothers and sisters, and really none of them saw the, f the, the purpose of education and, and didn't really go places or, or leave Swindon, where he grew up. And when he left school at 13, he went to work in, in the um, railway village, uh, the, uh, in the railway works, and um, he, at 13, was carrying molten iron around the foundry, which was noisy and dirty and grimy. And um, he obviously knew he needed to get escape from that. But the thing is, my dad's never told me about this. It's when I went to steam the railway museum and that I saw, I knew that's what his job was, but I saw what they did, that I found out that that's what happened to him. And I realised that he went to, he told us he went to night classes at that time, when he was 13 and 14. And gradually, by the time he was 21, he ended up being a clerk in, in, in Swindon and for the Great Western Railway. So um, that's one early experience in his life, which maybe helps us understand why he values education, help me understand. But the experience he does talk about, about his early life, is that at the age seven, he learned to ride a bike. And one day he set off um, and till he reached the countryside. And he loved it. And he was excited about what he could see, the beyond. And whenever he could, he got on a bike and escaped and used to go and pick mushrooms. Um, and if you're driving him through that area now, you know, he's talking about something that happened like 80 years ago. <laughs> Um, and so it was this curiosity about the world and the need to escape the foundry, whether it w which of those things it was that motivated him to get an education. Um, so what I think the purpose of education, what he's instilled in me, because then my sister and I went to university and my daughter ha has just graduated from Cambridge. And uh, my dad said it was the best day of his life when at 90 he went to um, uh, see my, my daughter graduate. So um, what my dad's learning teaches me is that um, education enables you to live a good life, but you need to do it at various times in your life and it needs to be fit for purpose for, for, for what you want to do. And, and uh, we need to find ways of, of, of supporting people and motivating people at the right times in their lives. So I'm sure I went on far too long.